58, 59, 60. Hide and go seek was the order of the evening. Two days of rain with no signs of stopping meant mud, mud, and more mud. Jen already knew where the kids were. They always hid together, and in the same spot. Twins like to stick together, it seemed. Hmm. I can't seem to find them. Where could they be? They giggled somewhere in the house. She tiptoed down the hall and peeked into their room. Goodness, I will never find them. Maybe here. She dropped to the floor and pulled the covers back. Mm, guess not. She searched the empty space under the bed. How about... Here! She shouted again, this time at an empty closet. They're really making me work for it this time. Nothing in the bath, no one in the laundry. She knew they were too scared to venture in the basement, but decided to check after she'd exhausted all other options. Jen noisily stomped down the stairs to announce her presence, hoping to elicit some giggles and shuffling. I'm going to find you! She stopped, noting the uncanny silence. With a five-year-old boy and a five-year-old girl, the only silence she ever experienced happened while they were sleeping. And even that was often interrupted by nightmares. Jordan! Casey! Come on, kids! You win! I give up! Ollie Ollie Oxen Free! You win! Mommy's not playing anymore! Come on now! It's time for dinner! Still nothing. Alright, how about this? If you come out now, we'll get a big, cheesy pizza, two buckets of whatever flavor ice cream you want, and we'll rent a movie! But you have to come out now! A minute passed, and the panic set in. All right, kids, come out now. If you don't come out, you're going to be in trouble, okay? Jordan Oliver Jones, you and your sister come out this instant. Jen suddenly heard movement above her and sprinted up the stairs. What on earth took you so long? I was starting to get worried. As she reached the ground level, Jen froze. The front door was wide open. She knew she'd locked it. She was obsessive about locking the door and checked it at least twice a day. She ran out onto the porch, dizzy and nearly hyperventilating. Jordan! Casey! She ran inside and called the police. Jen wasn't thinking clearly. Yes, I need help! My children are missing! Ch Ch Cherry Street! 43 Cherry Street! I, I was playing hide-and-go-seek with them and I, I couldn't find them... And I searched everywhere, and then I found the door open, and they're not here, they're gone! Is there anyone who might want to take them? Could they be with their father? A relative? The neighbors? My family doesn't live near here, and, and the neighbors are out, and- Jen's stomach nodded up. Oh god. Their father. I have a restraining order against him. He shouldn't even- He's not supposed to be in town, or anywhere near, or- Ma'am, I want you to go inside and lock the doors, just to be safe. Make sure all windows are latched as well. I'm sending a dispatch unit to patrol the area. Can you do that for me? Yes, yes, I... I... Okay. I'm inside. Good, thank you. Can you tell me about their father? Chen shuddered as the memories flooded back. He... He murdered his ex-wife in our home. It was all over the news. Jeremy Picking, he... Oh, yes. Yes, I remember. Shouldn't he be... Jen waited for her to finish, and heard silence. Hello? Hello? Are you there? She tried another number, and there was no dial tone. She jumped hard at the sound of a loud knock at the door. She saw what looked like an officer's uniform through the frosted glass and rushed to unlock it. Are you okay, Jen? It was Officer John Daly, an old peer of Jen's from high school, and police officer in town for over a decade. Gosh, you got here fast. Jen sighed. Relieved to not be alone anymore. The kids, John, they're gone. Don't I... Don't worry, Jen. John held her shoulders as she started to weep. They're probably just running around the neighborhood, messing around. I've got two cars out patrolling right now. Just stay inside and try to keep a cool head. We'll find them. Jen locked the door behind her again and paced the floor, wringing her hands, peering out the window and rechecking every potential hiding spot. As she crawled out from under the dining room table... She suddenly noticed motion on the second floor of the house next door. 
Her breathing stopped. They were supposed to be away for the weekend. A light in the attic flicked on, and the curtain swayed. Jen walked right up to her window, close enough for her nose to touch the glass, when the light suddenly flicked off again. Jen yanked the curtains closed, feeling exposed. She ran through the house, checking the locks again, roughly drawing all the curtains. She reached the glass door in the kitchen and came face to face with her neighbor Todd, screaming loudly enough to make him jump. Todd frowned, breathing heavily, and shook his head. Jesus, Jen, what is it? What happened? Jen cracked the door open, the chain lock still in place. Sorry, Todd, I... She suddenly remembered he was supposed to be out of town. Wait, why are you here? And why are you in town? Todd looked slightly offended. Well, Chrissy and I got into a big argument over how her dad always treats me, and while it was pretty rough, I'm being spared a trip to see the in-laws. But yeah, I got home like 10 minutes ago and saw Officer Daly leaving, so I figured I'd come check in on you and see if everything was okay. Oh, yeah, it's just, well, the kids, we were playing hide-and-go-seek, and I couldn't find them, and then... Something shiny glinting by Todd's side caught her eye. He gripped a pair of shears in his left hand. Todd followed her eyes down to see what had stopped her so abruptly. What? Oh! Sorry, yeah, I was crossing the backyard to get to yours. A lot of brush was getting in my way, so I thought, uh, I thought I'd just get on it and, you know, get out of the way. And, uh, you know, you, know, you don't have to talk to me through the door. Todd smiled, taking a step forward. Jen didn't flinch. Her mind was racing. The phone line was down. Todd appeared out of nowhere. The shears, the phone, the kids, the shears. Jen slammed the door in Todd's face and locked the other two bolts. Hey! Todd shouted and banged the door with the fist holding the shears. I just want to talk! Jen ran upstairs and tore through her father's old chest, desperately clawing around for the old 9mm. Why would Todd want her children? Was he trying to get her alone? His wife was out of town and he was always flirting just a bit too much. She found the gun just as she heard glass shattering downstairs. She silently loaded and cocked it. As much as instinct told her to hide, she couldn't. Not with Jordan and Casey's lives at stake. She crouched down, surveying the first floor from the top step. The kitchen door was completely obliterated, and Todd lay sprawled out on his chest. It had to be Jeremy. He took the kids, and now he was back to take her. This can't be happening, she repeated in her head over and over. She cracked. She couldn't take the tension any longer. What do you want from us? Jen? Oh, God. She raced down the stairs. John stood in the living room facing the kitchen with his pistol drawn. She threw her left arm around him, keeping the gun out of sight. She wasn't entirely sure if it was legal for her to have the weapon. Todd was here. He's, he's not supposed to be here. And he had these big shears and I freaked out. I think Jeremy was here. There's blood everywhere. Don't worry. I showed up just as Todd broke the glass to get in through your kitchen door. I shot him. It wasn't Jeremy. He stroked her hair. But, but I didn't hear any gunshots. Jen was confused, thinking surely Todd had been stabbed. Silencer. I didn't want to shake up the whole neighborhood if I didn't have to. Oh, right. Are my children at his house? Did you find them? Was Todd even involved in that, or does he just have amazing timing? Is he... Is he going to be okay? Shh, shh, shh. John held her tighter. You don't have to worry about John or Jeremy or any other man ever again. I'll make sure of it. Now how about some dinner? Jen pulled away, frowning. John, I can't exactly eat right now. My children are missing. She began tearing up. John continued smiling. How about I could go with you, and we could look together? You know, help the other guys you said are looking. Let them do their job, sweetie. They don't need any help. These are professional police officers. We're going to find little Jordan and Casey. Jen stopped moving, trying to remember when she told him the names of her children. They went to the same high school together, but that was all. He didn't know anything about her children. In fact... He hadn't even asked for their descriptions to tell the dispatchers who to look for. We'll get a big cheesy pizza, two flavors of ice cream, and hey, maybe we'll even run a movie to get your mind off of things. Her heart dropped, her stomach flew into her throat, and her breathing grew short and shallow. John? 
How do the dispatchers know who to look for? I told them what they look like, Jenny. You really need to calm down. John, how... How do you know what my children look like? Jen gripped the gun, still hidden behind her back. John's smile faded, and he took a step closer, his fists clenched. That's really not important, Jenny. Don't you want your children to be found? Don't you want them safe? Don't you want your children back, Jenny? Why do you keep calling me Jenny? You ask a lot of questions. That is what you liked to be called in high school, wasn't it? When we still hung out? Before you met that freak Jeremy and cut me out of your life completely? John, where are my kids? Jeremy's children are none of your concern anymore. Jen pulled the gun from behind her back and pointed it at John, shaking, praying she had loaded it correctly. Todd didn't break the glass door, did he? Did he? He was just another man that wanted to get to you. Unfazed by the gun, John plopped down on the couch. You know, if you shoot me, you'll never find them. Jen felt her will slipping as she sobbed. What do you want? Sit, and give me the gun. Jen did as she was told and collapsed into the armchair. Did you even notice how much I cared about you in high school? I never stopped caring. I've been watching you and keeping you safe for years, Jen. John continued his diatribe, relaying stories from high school that Jen barely remembered. As he ranted, she noticed a light out of the corner of her eye. It was Chrissy. She was home from her parents' place. Please come here looking for Todd. Please, please, please. Jen kept her eyes focused on Todd as she noticed Chrissy crossing her backyard in her peripheral. I can keep you safe. No one will ever touch you ever again. Think of Casey. Think of little Jordan. I'll keep them sick. John and Jen jumped as Chrissy's screams interrupted them. She'd found Todd. Jen seized the moment to snatch back the gun. John lunged for it, setting it off. His face froze, his eyelids drooping. He'd taken a bullet straight to the gut. John staggered backward, crashing to the floor. Jen ran to Chrissy, who held Todd in her arms. He drifted in and out of consciousness. There's no time to explain. Please, I need to use your phone. She helped Chrissy drag Todd to the front yard just as two officers screeched to a halt in their patrol cars. Four officers with guns drawn rushed toward the house, yelling for Jen and Chrissy to lay down. Apparently, neighbors contacted the police at the sound of the gunshot. The officers didn't immediately comprehend why one of their own was lying on Jen's floor after her children went missing. However, after hearing knocking coming from John's patrol vehicle, they found Jordan and Casey unharmed in the trunk. John survived, but was fired and sent to a psychiatric ward for counseling. Jen already knew where the kids were. They always hid together. Kayla, go lay down. They giggled somewhere in the house. That is the sound of my dog going up the stairs. For the hundredth time. A pan- Bleh, bleh, bleh. It was Officer Jen Daly. Daly, Daly. I'm gonna say Daly. It was Officer- I also said Jen Daly. <laughs> Jen walked right up to her window, close enough for her nose to touch the glass. Kayla! Kayla, please go lay down. Oh, right. Noir! Hey guys, do you like our content? Do you want to support the show? Click the link in the description below to visit our donation page. All proceeds go towards new and better equipment and games you want to see us play. Everyone who donates will get a special shout out at the end of future videos, and we're currently working on setting up some special perks for you. If you don't want to donate, that's okay too. You can support us by subscribing and clicking that bell icon so you get notified whenever we put out a new video. A huge thank you to Kyle Sheridan for donating and helping to keep our show going. Thank you so much for checking out today's story. A huge thank you to my friends Jordan McDougall, Mel Teach, Zachary Scott, and Kyle Sheridan for helping me out today. Make sure to give them some love. Links in the description down below. 
If you'd like to see yesterday's story, click that box on the left. Or if you'd like to see something a little different, click that box on the right to check out our latest Let's Voice Act series. Thanks for watching. Stay creepy, everybody.